Hey everybody, Dylan here, and today I'm making a quick hardware repair video for the original uh, NES. Now today what I'll be uh, working on is replacing the 72 pin connector in the system, and basically what that is, is what reads the game cartridges and gets them to work. Over time, the pins on the 72 pin connector, they get either damaged or bent, and it, um, what it reads right here is that's the like the RAM uh, cartridge that it reads to play the game and over time when the 72 pin connector gets damaged it can't read the game anymore so all that happen is when you put the game in the system like this turn it on and um, you don't get anything you can't play your game it's just this staticness So of course the solution to this problem is to fix a 72 pin connector and you can either take it out and try cleaning it up some with some rubbing alcohol or uh, even like try to straighten out the pins, bend them back in place. That's not what I'll be doing today. Um, I went ahead and actually bought a new one and you can buy these right off Amazon.com. I'll go ahead and take it out so we can have a look at it. There we are. And this is what reads the NES games. So the really nice part about this repair is almost anyone can do it. You don't really have to know a lot about computer engineering. You don't have to be an expert with hardware and replacing. You don't you don't you don't have to do any soldering. The piece itself just pops right out. All you need is the replacement 72 pin connector and a Phillips head screwdriver that's long enough to be able to get into the NES. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna turn the NES over like this. And there are gonna be six spots to take screws out. So you got two on this side, two in the middle, and then two on this side. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, and now we're just going to flip the system back on its side. You can hear the screws kind of fall out there. And when you're doing this, don't make the same stupid mistakes I did, like leaving a game in the console. Go ahead and take that out. And you also want to make sure you have the loading tray in the up position. I'd also re recommend having a small Star Wars container to be able to keep the screws in so you don't lose them. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. And there should be six screws. I have three here now. If they uh, if you didn't screw them out all the way, go ahead and do that and then flip it back over and get them all out. All right, so after you got the remaining screws out and then managing to lose one on the floor, it's time to just go ahead and take the top of the NES right off and it should come off pretty easily like that. Okay, and then we're going to have um, this metal shielding here, you'll see, and we will need to remove the screws to lift that up. Alright, so we will go ahead and take the screws out to be able to lift up the shielding. And then this guy should be able just to pop right up, just gentle of course. Whenever working with computer hardware, you always want to be as gentle as possible. Okay, and then next we have the loading tray, and that will need to come out as well. So this has, I believe six screws as well, it has two on this side, and then two on each side of here. So we will go ahead and get those out.
Alrighty, so after you have those screws removed, and hopefully you didn't lose a couple of them in the system like I did, you're gonna go ahead and remove the top loading dock. So that should just be able to slide right out. Like this. Just kind of have to play with it a little bit, but of course be gentle. And it comes out. Okay. And then next we'll have to, here's a screw, found one. We'll have to, let's see, remove these two screws here to be able to lift this up and then remove the bottom shielding. So I will go ahead and do that now. So sometimes you'll have to kind of fight the screws out. Uh, if you have thicker fingers like I do, it'd be harder to get into some of the crevices. Uh, if you have trouble pulling in the screws out, um, a pair of tweezers normally does the job pretty well. And that's not forcing anything out, that's just if they're already screwed out and you just can't get in there to uh, pull them out. So we are going to lift this part here, the main motherboard. And we have the shielding, I'm just gonna kind of the bottom shielding lift that off just a little bit doesn't have to go far and this is the original 72 pin connector here I'll try to give you an angle on it there and this just pops right off and this is what we're replacing so I have to play with it a little bit okay and uh, my camera decided to stop recording because it's uh, an asshole but I did take off the original 72 pin connector that is it here, and we'll go ahead and put that to the side. And you grab your brand new 72 pin connector, and you just put it uh, right back where it came from. Um, do it the same way. Put that in there. Just clips right on here. Just be uh, gentle, and um, you didn't fully see me take the original one off, but you want to make sure you're uh, gentle with that one as well. Just don't overly force anything. Just things should pop out and pop in relatively smoothly oh. alright so it took me a minute to uh, get that back on there but this is the brand new 72 pin connector and when you're um, you want to go ahead and place everything back into place it might uh, give you a little bit of a hard time but just make sure everything's nice and flat uh, sometimes a wire might get caught underneath or something like that, but you want to make sure it's perfectly flat when putting everything back on. So now we will go ahead and put the screws back for the bottom shield here. And now we're gonna put the loading tray back into place. And this can be one of the more difficult parts of um, doing this. That miraculously worked out very easily for me, but it can be a lot more trickier than that. I just got really lucky there. So we're gonna go ahead and put the screws back, get them nice and secured. Alright, so when you have most of your screws on, there's just these two screws that are a little longer and these are the only different size screws in this whole process, so it's easy to remember and they go in the first holes on both of these sides. I'm not sure why these ones are any longer, but they are, so you want to make sure you put them back from where they came from. And then you just want to make sure to tighten up everything else. It's a good idea when um, screwing things back in like this. You want to not completely screw it in all the way at first. Just to make sure everything lines up nicely and doesn't give you any trouble.
Yeah. And that should be good. And then we can see. So we got the shielding, and we're going to put that right back on. Line it back up. And get this back screwed on. Okay, so now that we have the shield back in place, we can go ahead and put the top cover back onto the NES. Make sure it's on there nicely. Kind of hold on to it with both hands so it doesn't fall off. And we are going to put the screws right back where they came from. So you got one. Let's over here. Two. Three. Three, four, five, and six is somewhere on my floor, which I will find between these cuts. So go ahead and screw all these back in here. And flip it back over. And now if everything went uh, correctly, we should have a nicely working NES now. Okay, and now it's time to test everything out, make sure our repair went the way it should have gone. I have a game in here, and I am going to attempt to turn it on. Wow. Okay, so that came right up, light and quick, first try. That's amazing. I don't think I've ever had a NES game turn on without having to fidget with it for 10 or 15 minutes. So, definitely worth doing the repair. This makes me really happy. This is the first time I've tried doing this and I would definitely recommend giving it a try and hopefully you can follow along with this video and do it yourself at home. So uh, that ends things. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.